Blah. <laughs> the few problems that I, a lot of problems that I had on tour with having lost my vocals, my voice after nine shows in a row, you know, I wasn't used to singing 30 some songs in one hour. Why? Okay. Is that why it happened? Why did yeah. you just, you just weren't, you just, you're, so, yeah, go ahead. A- a- Empire Hideous broke up in, on February 15th, 1998. Mm-hmm. Three months later, actually a month, two months later, after I meet Jerry at a horror convention, Chiller Theater convention. Chiller, um, yeah. I, I meet Jerry. I tell him that I'm no longer in the band. They were having trouble with Michael. They had booked a tour for South America. And uh, I basically tell them, like, you know, you, you should have picked me to be your singer in the first place because I could have done this for you. Yeah. And uh, that resonated with Kenny. Kenny told Jerry, Kenny, Kenny is uh, Jerry's brother. Right. Uh, Kenny told Jerry, April, I get a phone call. Was it April? Yeah. No, no, no. May, May, I get a phone call from Jerry. And explain, me, explain. Hold on. I'm sorry to cut you off. I apologize. W- explain for the audience what, what, where uh, Kenny's involvement at that time. Kenny was the manager and the mascot. Kenny would come out dressed as the right. Crimson, Crimson Ghost at the beginning of yeah. the show. And he also managed the band. Right. So right. when I saw them in April at the horror convention in New Jersey, yeah. I was talking to Kenny. Kenny tells me we're having a lot of trouble with our singer, Michael Graves. And, uh, uh, you know, he doesn't want to go on this tour to South America. And that's when I turned to Kenny. I said, well, I said, that's, you, 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 that's because you, you picked the wrong guy. I said, you should have picked yeah. me. I said, I wanted to audition for the band. But when I called up and got Doyle on the phone, Doyle asked me, uh, how much can you bench? Like weights? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, none, because I don't lift weights. He's like, oh, well, you're going to have to you know, pump some iron. I'm like, okay. And then he asks me, do you do any drugs? And I'm like, well, aside from the pot that I smoke with your brother, no. <laughs> he said to me, all right, uh, can you sound like Tom Jones? What? I said, are you going to tell me that Glenn Danzig sounds like Tom Jones on Earth AD? No, I don't think so. But I said, look, I said, it, I said, <laughs> wait, wait, that's wait. What I was, that's what I was asked. What, how, how would that even, how would that even, what would I that sound? Know. It's not on you. It's not <laughs> unusual to be loved by hey, anyone. Do, when do, you do, feel do. like you have right. too slow. <laughs> hey, so, hey, 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 sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, so, you know. I'm getting asked all these stupid questions. Like how much yeah. do you weigh? At the time I was 145 pounds, 150 pounds. He's like, oh, we're going to have to beef you up a bit. I'm like, yeah. Okay. I said, listen, if you want a singer, give me a call, but all this other shit is nonsense. I'll sing for the band, but I'm not doing all this, all this other shit. And that was it. So I never auditioned for the band, but I wanted to. And they had, right. I had known them for a, like 11 years at that point. Okay. So, so, Eventually, uh, uh, all right. So fast forward to 1998. I tell I tell Kenny they, in my opinion, I felt that they picked the wrong guy. Right. I think they, and this is just my opinion. I felt that they picked Michael Graves because he was only 18 years old, maybe 19, and they wanted to mold him into 100%. exactly what they wanted him to do. And let's face it, at 18, 19 years old, you're very impressionable to, to impressionable to a guy who's like in his 40s and is in a famous band and has money to like make it happen. So you 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 do what they tell you. So they pick Michael Graves over me. I'm like, okay, so that it is what it is. So at the convention I tell him you should have picked me. Kenny tells Jerry, Jerry calls me in, 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 in May, tells me, we want you. How would you like to go on tour to South America? I'm like, yeah, let's go. So uh, I basically put everything I owned because I was moving out of the house I was living in with the, with the band. Yeah. I put everything I owned into storage. Jerry told me to learn 35, uh, 30 songs, 35 songs. I learned them because I didn't know any of the new songs at all. And as far as the old right. songs were concerned, I half the time I didn't know what the hell Glenn Danzig was singing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Right. So all I heard was "Whoa!" <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, you, oh man, when I had to learn the yeah. song "Mommy, Can I Go Out and Kill Tonight," that was a oh, tough my one. God. Wow. Anywho, so you know, I had to learn these songs. I had to put everything I owned in storage. I had to quit yeah. my job. I had to teach a new person how to do my job at the job I was working at. I had to get. I had to drive to Connecticut for like an eight-hour day to get my passport in one day oh, passport situation in, in addition to driving up to vernon to rehearse like a couple days during the week you know and this all happened in two weeks and then before right. I, knew it, I was on a plane going to europe because they then they i was when i did the audition michael had called up and left a message on kenny's answering machine and he was pissed because when they found out when chud told him that i was being auditioned yeah to do the tour in south america yeah. michael called up and quit over the phone he's like if you're gonna get my kiddies to sing f you and go f yourself and f my kiddies and that's it have fun i quit yeah. so that's when jerry's like you want to go to he goes you want to go to europe too i'm like yeah let's go <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna pass that up man you know i mean you, you, if the opportunity is there you're gonna take it and that's exactly right. what i did the thing right. was i had i had Look, when I did Empire Hideous, we didn't do a punk rock set of 30 songs. We did, you know, usually like between 10 or 11 songs, which filled up 45 minutes to an hour of music. And after each song, we stopped. You know, the Misfits do like the Ramones. They stop a song, one, two, three, four, and they go into the next one. Right. And it's a nonstop it's show. Of it's a tour high, de force. High velocity yeah. lyrics. So it took a lot out of me. I wasn't used to it. And after like the fifth show, I was like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm starting to lose my voice. I wasn't used to it. Uh, in addition to not having sang since February with my last show at empire hideous, it was wow. a, a, a big thing. So the European tour, which was something like 38 shows out of 43 days or something like that. Yeah. You know, we did the first run, we did nine shows in a row and it, it really, it murdered me. Yeah. Uh, so I really had a, I had to take care of my voice and, and I, there's a couple of shows. If you, if you watch them, you can hear me cracking and, and that's because I just wasn't used to it. But by the time the second tour came around in South America, I was a fucking rock. I was yeah. so, my you body were. was so tight. And I was in the yeah. best shape I had ever been in my life. And I knocked those lyrics out like a mf -er. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not, to, not to toot my own horn.